Tonight's Night Court focuses on a family dispute over gender identity. Now, according to James Younger's mother, she's a pediatrician, the seven-year-old child born a male identifies now as a girl. His mother, her mother, calls James Luna. She lets you, Luna use the girl's bathroom and has registered the child in school as a girl. James' father, Jeff Younger, says James presents himself as a boy whenever they're together. The ex-wife says the man's guilty of child abuse for refusing to treat their child as a girl. It's all headed to court now as Jeff attempts to block his ex-wife from letting their seven-year-old transition into becoming a girl. So let's bring in tonight's Legal Eagles. Criminal defense attorney Bob Bianchi and former Baltimore prosecutor Debbie Hines. Guys, I got to say, this is a, such a tricky one. We were talking about it during the commercial. There's a lot to unpack here, but let's start with the complaint from the mother who happens to be a pediatrician. Exhibit A says, James is a gender expansive or transgender child and by choice now goes by the name Luna and is only known by her classmates as a girl. Uh, Bob, she says that's the right track to proceed in. The father says, I got to have a say in this too. Yeah, you know, listen, I'm really concerned about this case, and I'm conflicted, too. I don't have a problem if there's a definitive understanding of what the gender the child wants to identify with. He, but this is a vicious divorce that has gone on here. Two parents that are at each other's throats. And the father's position, and his lawyer are arguing, or he's arguing, that the mother is telling him that, uh, telling the child that he is a girl. And that, in fact, while he may dress as a girl at the mom's house, he comes out in boys' clothing, and when he's at the father's home, he's in boys' clothing, and when the father brings up with him, do you feel like a girl or want to be a girl, the quote from the father was that he, the child violently disagrees with this. And I'll add one last point to this that concerns me from a factual point of view, is that the child was brought to social services, and social services determined, based on what the child said, that he wants to be a girl with mom, and he wants mm. to be a boy with dad, which shows me either he's, uh, the child is conflicted and trying to appease the parents, or perhaps Perhaps maybe you should let the child be what he wants to be with whomever parent he's with. Hmm. Okay, uh, we want to play a little bit of um, the child and the father. And this is some video I think that comes from the father's website. He's got a website explaining the whole case and, and his fight in this. Here's a bit of the video, Exhibit B. Who told you you were a girl? Mommy. <clears throat> when did she tell you you were a girl? I love girls. Does mommy um, do anything else like with a girl with you? Mm-hmm. Like what? Like chesses. Okay, so Debbie, uh, the mom makes the allegation that it's child abuse to not treat this child as a girl. Correct. And I think that in this case, and what you're having is not just one parent against the other, though that's and ultimately how it ends up in a lot of family court situations. And yes, I agree with Bob, this is a very unfortunate case. But it's interesting, if you look at what the American Psychiatric um, Association says, it actually says that a child between the ages of two and six does understand what its gender is, meaning if it's a boy, as in this case, and wants to be a girl, that the child actually identifies with gender between the ages of of two and six, this child is seven years old. And in order for to have the diagnosis of gender dysphoria, what it also means is that there's a consistency of six months of the child, in this case, identifying as a girl, not only just identifying, but wanting to wear girls' clothing, wanting to play with girls' um, toys, wanting to only have playmates. And so it's not totally just a matter of mom says, wants mm -hmm. to be a girl and dad says wants to be a boy and at the end of the day if a judge has already determined that it's in the best interest of the child for the child to go forward in this fashion it is a tantamount to child abuse of what the father is doing mm -hmm. but in in, in the ultimate end of the day, it does seem to be, as it is unfortunately in a lot of family law cases, a lot of back and forth tug mm -hmm. of war. And I just ultimately hope that this child is not being played in the middle by both parents. All right. I'll give you both a closing argument, about 15 seconds each. Bob, we'll start with you. Yeah, well, that's exactly the point. The child is being put in the middle of all this. And so courts, what business do they have in being in the business without definitive information? This is a unique case. It's not a child that says one thing and that's it. This child is saying both things. And this father is being deprived of his rights to bring religion into his education, into the child's education, because a lot of that is male, female generated. Mm -hmm. And I think it's okay. outrageous at this point in time without better evidence all and right. more expert testimony. Very quick, Debbie. But this case is not about religion. 
religion. It's not about Christianity. This case is about what's in the best interest of the child. And if there's been a definitive diagnosis in this case, and that's what the court has to go by, and that's what the court has to rule on and stand very firmly on, it's not about religion. We will follow the case. Bob and Debbie, you've both made your arguments. We'll leave it to the jury at home. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. All right, check.